Uh, I think that right now we are at a very different space where we were when we began, or when people began speaking about the cloud. So uh, probably 10 years ago, there was conversations about the cloud that we could have everything in one uh, interconnected system that you could access it everywhere. But technology wasn't there. So right now, most people have broadband access. Formerly, we had dial-up access with your beautiful modems that were squeaky whenever, time, whenever you connected. The speeds that the, the modems are sustained are truly inconceivable right now because even the shabbiest broadband connection is probably five, 10, 15 times quicker than the fastest modem you ever had. So I think uh, everything has, um, technology-wise, the infrastructure is there that's right now supporting this sort of cloud approach. Not to mention that also the culture has changed. Most people right now have everything in their mobile devices. We have smartphones when formerly the, they, they were not the norm, now they are. Pretty much everyone has either a Blackberry or an iPhone in, in the business environment. Where they are used to have the apps, they are used to have the information right now, right then, in the minute. So that culture shift also helps to have this sort of cloud approach. You are far more confident in having your information accessible anywhere at any time. Cloud, by the mere reality of the cloud, it, it's a security risk because your information is not stored in a hard drive in your computer where it's physically accessible. No, it's stored in a server which can be accessed through the internet from anywhere in the world. However, if the security is right, I mean the protocols for most cloud uh, computing are there and are set and are right, so they do have 128-bit or 256-bit uh, security encryption, which in general terms it means that you have two very large prime numbers, you mix match them and you create this new uh, key, which is how you secure everything. Uh, for someone to break either a 28-bit or a 256-bit key will take somewhere around 8 to 10 years. So it's really tight on that end. Of course, you have examples as the Sony uh, PlayStation Network, when it was not so much the cloud, but actually a problem with the security set setting of the servers. So, yeah, you have those sort of examples where human error is also possible. But I would say that the cloud, so you have these systems in the cloud, most of them are really watertight security-wise. However, that doesn't take away the human factor. If your password is ABC123, if your password is your date of birth, if your password is something that people could harvest from your Facebook, from your Twitter, from all these other sorts, uh, sources of information, then uh, there's a potential risk that someone could access your information on the cloud with the ties to security, to the security protocols. Because at the end, yes, the key is encrypted, but if you know, the key is your birthday, well, anyone could just harvest that information and try to gain access. On the other end, most people are now conscious that leaving their password as ABC123 or not including these special characters or actually some systems forcing you to not only use a password which is eight characters long but a passphrase which can be anything from 32 to 64 characters long is helping to tighten up the security. I would say that it's a, it's a huge difference. It's a, probably the same difference as I would have. Uh, or I feel right now when when I see some three-year-old kid trying to swipe the television set because they're used to do it on the right. Um, so I think mm, for those of us that that were here when the internet was born, so around 1997, this World Wide Web explosion, 95, 96. Um, we, we were children around the 80s and we could live without a computer. We did live without computers, which most children now, well, that, 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 that thought doesn't even cross their minds. Internet and the computers are there since the very beginning. So we came from a different generation. Also, we, we came from uh, a world where there were loads of promises. Uh, I do remember the dot-com uh, bubble 
I, I do remember it crashing. We had all these crazy websites that were very ahead of the time because they required a broader, uh, in, a broader internet uh, access base. They required more users. They required uh, probably larger uh, infrastructure, so they required broadband. But I do remember that there were huge ideas uh, in, in 1998 that sadly they were too far ahead for them to be successful. However, you can see now that some of those ideas took, they, they were very good ideas and, and eventually they grew up. Amazon, I do think, is, is the best example. Amazon was one of the survivors of the dot com bubble and it's one of the largest companies in the world. eBay, another survivor of that com dot com bubble. And the users, YouTube, was the children of those users that saw the bubble crash. So I think this crowd mind of how can we make internet a better place, a safer place, a powerful tool, is what's driving now this, this sort of technology. So what do I, what's the difference I see? In 1998 we had loads of ideas, we had probably loads of promises, uh, but they were too far ahead, they were too far away, we didn't have the technology to, to actually do them or to actually create them. Now we have. The ideas are still great, the potential is still magnificent. I don't see internet running short of ideas anytime soon. And on top of that, we now have the broadband access, we now have the infrastructure, we now have the culture, we now have the, the sort of uh, right interaction. We know that what we can accomplished by crowd, uh, crowdfunding, by, by sharing our content online, by even creating a Facebook page. That is a huge step uh, for, forward to, towards this new internet embracing culture uh, that we didn't have in 1998 or, or, or in the early 90s and that most of the children will be born with. I think plenty. Uh, not, to, not only that you have your information accessible everywhere at any time but you can also with this information access everywhere you can work anywhere uh, probably it's not the best thing to do but you potentially could work from you know, in, in your in your holidays which you shouldn't do it's, it's a very bad habit but you shouldn't but if you need you don't need a desk, you don't need to, to you know, even the, the, the LAN cable to plug your computer in because everything is there, everything, either you're sitting here in London or you're across, across the ocean in New York City or you're in Bali, you have it, the same access to the same information as long as you have a Wi-Fi wi hotspot or an internet connection. That's so powerful because it doesn't matter where you are, you can work, you can be productive, you can keep your projects going and that what, what works for you works for your team. So you have all these people free from the uh, shackles of the desk actually being creative in a park because that's, that's the other thing. Most of the time you, the best of ideas come in the shower or while walking a park or something. So instead of writing or screwing them in a post-it and just probably getting the post-its lost or, or in, in a pad you can actually do something about it. You can send an email, or you can load that information into the cloud and someone else might pick it up from your team and say, mm, that's a very good idea, and start working from it in, in, in the commute time from your door to the office or, or to the park, or wherever. So it's so powerful to have all this information at any, in any given time accessible to, to yourself or to yourself and your team. It's, uh, it's fantastic, it's the potential of it is it's mind baffling. I, I, I think I'll go back to, to, to this sort of generational uh, gap we have. I'm feeling very old by referring to myself as that old guard of the 90s. But yeah, I, I was born in, in the 80s. So I was born without a computer. Uh, I didn't have internet access until I was around uh, 30 years old. And I do remember that internet access was Telnet, Gopher, FTP, things that right now are well, part of prehistory. I, I think the Smithsonian should eventually have a, an exhibit on what was the internet that, uh, back, back in the 90s. It was nothing like the World Wide Web that was an upgrade to what we had. 
So for that generation, we still have this uh, sort of um, HTML-based systems. We have this very robust, but not user so user-friendly HR systems. Uh, I would say PeopleSoft is AP, which are very powerful, but the interface might not be the friendliest. So it would be like Windows 3.1. So it was nice. It was very useful, but probably if you compare it to Windows 7, Windows 8, with all this tactile technology, to, to the iOS from Apple. We are ages away it's from going from, from, the mid, mid, from the Middle Ages to, to, the, to the new to the 2000s. And right now, what people want, or, or what this new generation of, uh, of joiners in the workforce want, they have their banking online, they have their Facebook profiles online, they have their Twitter accounts online, they have all this music online, they have their entertainment online. So why won't they have their personal and their work information also online? Why can't they access it anywhere from their home, from their bathroom, from the beach? Why would it be so different if we have all these things already online? Whereas for me, I still think of my file as a folder somewhere kept in tidy in a, in a, in a locked drawer. So I think that's the future of the HR systems. We will move, or we are moving towards a far more user-oriented experience. So the interfaces are not so much of how many reports you can run from, or how you can run from it. Uh, so thought of the HR business partner, of the HR uh, systems uh, sort of people know. They, they are thought on the end user, which will always be our employees uh, uh, and their managers, because we want to empower them. That's, that's where things will go. Even if we don't want, or even if we, our culture, our corporate cultures or uh, the, our companies are not right there, because well, we work in a hierarchical environment, we have so this sort of very tight controls, whatever. At the end, that change will happen because all the employees will have their information, they will have that sort of relationship with their data, and that will transpire into how they will want to manage and use their, inf their work information in the workplace. So I think that's the future. The future is a uh, far easier interface for employees, for end users, so that they could just click here and extract all these powerful reports, all these powerful tools, without a single line of coding.